Okay. So what are we going to do in next uh, 15 minutes is to uh, go through the presentation, which is a brief one, which talks about two important technologies. Next slide, please. Which talks about two important technologies that we have to that we have to look into EV segment, okay? One is AV and another is EV itself. What are we doing in the vehicle uh, vehicles today? There are <coughs> vehicles which are available which are connected, okay? And we are attempting to connect them more and we'll see the reason why they are required. Autonomy is what is needed. We want to be hands-free. And we are looking at level five and level six kind of, a car, uh, of vehicles going forward and electric vehicles and we know the reason why electric vehicles are required so important takeaway here is we need av and ev two different segments which are emerging much faster than what we anticipated okay next slide please so first topic of my presentation is software defined vehicle okay and i'm clubbing all these av features into software defined vehicles next slide please so what is actually a software defined vehicles by definition it means that the software component is more than the hardware that you have you can imagine the amount of enablement that you have to do through software and there is a need for it so if the component of a vehicle is more in software then we call it as a software defined vehicles and what does it actually do it transforms the motor automobile from the basic operations of all of these electromechanical stuff into more of electronic operation. So it is controlled by relays, it is controlled by a lot of other intelligent mechanisms, and you can actually uh, upgrade these terminals. That means you can upgrade the software uh, defined vehicles the way you like. And the functions, the functions and the values uh, that, that are available from these uh, automobiles can be upgraded over the air, OTA interfaces, okay? Now, this is well said. People are doing it well so far. We have seen a lot of infotainment system. We have seen safety systems which are automated. But is that it? <clears throat> can we call it a software-defined vehicle? Really not. The architect, next slide, please. The architecture which is emerging is to move from a clustered system, which are different for different functions, Next, press one more. Okay, which are, which, are, which are different for different functions into more centralized approach. So what kind of vehicle are we looking at? Instead of having all the sensors around the, uh, around the vehicle and get, uh, gathering the information about surrounding, processing it, and taking action, we want to club it with all other communication means, safety means, and any other kind of electrification control that we want. And that's what will be truly truly software defined vehicle. So what do we need? We need a hardware platform. We would continue to need shafts, we'll continue to need wheels, we'll continue to need, we need motors, etc. But they are not functioning by itself. And we are going to do it through the onboard of, uh, onboarding of software, which earlier was embedded. So each of these functions were separately working with their embedded software. Now it is, now it is centralized. So you have a one CPU, uh, it is sharing all the information with all the uh, all the units in the vehicle and then you have the services and the functions which are which are implemented is that it are we going to do it this way for the vehicle is vehicle alone no we are going to cloudify it what it means is the vehicle will be able to talk to the cloud will gather the information from the cloud and will be able to take actions informed decisions and this is a journey that is imperative. It is necessary to go to level six kind of vehicle where we need complete autonomy. And it, it gets extremely com complex when you get into cloudified environment because, because we are not dealing with data, we are dealing with human actions. And it has to be on real time basis. So a lot of communications, a lot of actions which are needed on the real time would require <coughs> plenty of information churning and decision making. Next slide, please. Okay, so if I am an executive of a company who is running an automobile business, what is that insomnia feeling that I have? Okay, these are the three important areas that you have to uh, work through. Okay, uh, and, the, and the first one is the choice of the technology itself. We are not, I mean, the automobile industry does not make phones, right, which can be changed every two years. If you choose a technology, it has to stay for several years or probably decades, right? So choice of technology and the ability of these technologies to get upgraded. And when we say upgraded, I'm talking about electronics. I'm not talking about the mechanical stuff, okay? 
and it is coming from multi vendor okay so you have to, your, your choice is even tough what if everything is fine in the ecosystem and one vendor says no i am giving up okay you are in <coughs> problems second one is transforming the company most of us as you know you have raised your hands are mechanical electrical engineers some of you electronics engineers but very few software engineers in the automotive segment and that's where we need maximum energy today so we have to transform the executives have to transform the whole company from the hardware centric to more of the softwareized approach okay wherein we have to build all these software and then keep on upgrading it okay and remember the earlier slide we are cloudifying uh, cloudifying the whole setup and making it vulnerable as well right because you have a security threat now somebody can invade into your system and can jeopardize the whole operations of the vehicle okay and it is very critical because we are dealing with probably human bodies in the vehicle right okay so cyber security itself is a third big area which has come in into the automotive sector it looks very fine to talk about these things that these gets enabled but when you start implementing it you are realizing that you have a lot of actions which needs to be taken to make it full proof okay next slide please so this is how the software defined vehicles vehicle would look like don't worry about the tester that surrounds that we don't have time to uh, to talk about that but you see a main cpu controls everything two important things that i want to talk about here is the sensory unit okay the car is fitted with radar or the vehicle is fitted with radars and they are a short range radars you cannot see everything through camera okay and you have to fit the radars so when you when you when you fit the radars you have plenty of those it collects the information and gets gets you the view around you is that sufficient no because you want to know the view of the vehicles much ahead much ahead of you if i want an autonomy if i want a software defined vehicle let us say a car uh, which is in fourth or fifth position earlier to me is braking our natural instinct allows you to brake any way right you do it without knowing it right but the system will not take action if if it is not told and to get that information you need a continuous online communication you see that v2x and slash gs and uh, gnss that means the gps or glonass or ir nss whatever it is okay these are the geo positions and v2x is vehicle uh, vehicle to anything communication it can be pedestrian it can be any other information that you want the the vehicle gets all the information and takes informed decision so you can imagine the amount of software that will that will need to control this and <clears throat> what do we need to do with this software imagine how much of data points or how much of qa cycle that we run on a typical software okay those in the software engineering would know here it is almost infinite because there are infinite possible actions that people would take sitting in the vehicle and you will you cannot run all these test cases you will need some additional mechanism in time you will know most of the people talking about ai ml stuff where the machine starts learning by itself that means you have the repository of all of this information getting pumped the way google has done things by populating map right all this reporter repository goes into the cloud and then it gets disseminated to each of these vehicles and make them learn better and better and that's where we are heading for so this kind of complex scenario is emerging next slide please the second component is electric vehicles much easier to understand okay then the then the communication zone so we are going to talk about that next slide next slide please okay so <clears throat> what has happened in the ev zone right now if i ask you how many vehicles or let us let us just restrict ourselves to cars how many cars are sold worldwide in one year any figure come on very close yeah it is 100 million very close yeah it's 100 million and how many of that are ev cars not at all not at all it is less than 1% right now okay there are few countries in which ev is not at all sold most of the developing countries uh, are not buying ev enough and why is this penetration so far the penetration is largely because of government subsidies and the push towards cleaner environment is it going to give us the result that we want if we want to electrify everything by 2030 or 35 for sustainability reasons absolutely no and the reasons are here 
Okay, what is it that we will have to change? As an executive of a company, what do I need to change? I need to reduce the cost of EV, okay? And that's what I'll have to do. It has to compete with the cars or with the vehicles of fossil fuel first, okay? And right now, that cost is covered through subsidies. It is not through technology. Second one is extend the driving range, okay? And the driving range is still limited. On an average, in my studies, I, I have found that if you put all cars together, the average driving range is 250 kilometers, compared to fossil fuel, which is around 450 to 500 kilometers, okay? And the third one is the amount of time that you have to spend in charging close to 30 minutes, okay? This is going to be uh, a deterrent going forward, and that's where we will have to change things, okay? And <clears throat> this, is, this is coming up in all the interviews that we have conducted with automotive people. If you, are you going to buy an EV car? They said, no, these are the reasons, okay? It's expensive, it's not proven, its driving range is limited, and I need to wait a long for charging. If you charge it at home, uh, a, a heavy vehicle, then you still need to wait for a very long time. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so <clears throat> what is it that, that impact the, uh, the, the cost, okay? If you see, one third of the cost of the vehicle is battery itself. And the drivetrain, drivetrain consists of, of course, not battery, but I'm including battery for comfort, motor, transmission, okay, or, or shaft, everything, okay? You, we, we, we are quite mature in those technologies. We have been running motors, we have been doing all this mechanical stuff so well. The room of optimization of cost is very little. There, the room of optimization of cost is largely in the batteries. And people are asking for range, that means we will have to make bigger batteries. And when you make it bigger, it consumes even bigger cost. Okay, next slide, please. Right? Okay, so what do we need to do to, to proliferate EV everywhere? Okay, and that's what is our ambition. So it's not going to end there. Let's do something about it. <clears throat> we have to innovate. First is we have to innovate far rigorously than what we have done in the past. Generate EV battery, and that's what is our focus, with greater range. Okay, longer lifetime and improved safety and cost. For country like ours where the temperature range is so much, you can imagine if you do a very fast charge, battery can heat up and it can explode, right? So there is a limit to which you can play around with all this. And these are the five areas which we think in, <coughs> in EV, Lot of research and lot of work is required. First is meet the market trends. What is the what is the typical charging voltage of? Let me not put the names, but a typical car, three phase motor, induction motor. What will be the charge voltage? Around 400 volts, right? People are talking about 1.5 kilovolt. Okay, that's the charging voltage and one megawatt of power. Of course, there are charging technologies if you take CDC, uh, CCS or Shademo or uh, GBT. It has gone up to the range of around 800 kilowatt. People are now, now looking at both the charging, uh, charging gun technology as well as the battery to be charged up to one megawatt. That's immense amount of power that you need. Reduce energy use because there is limited energy and here, uh, we, ca we can talk about a lot, but we need to reduce the energy, optimize the test process, because if you have a complete EV factory, there are too many batteries to be tested before they are mounted, too much of data points, and each battery takes a long time to test, right? It needs huge amount of energy. How much of energy are you going to pump? And the battery test also includes charging and discharging. When you discharge it, how are you going to use the power? Are you going to just dissipate it? Dissipate it as heat, questions to be asked, right? Build knowledge, okay? This is what we will have to do in-house. Most of the automotive industry is, <coughs> is, is, is uh, oblivious to uh, the, the software component as well as the, uh, the, the power electronics part of it, and that's what we will have to build. And then scale manufacturing. Scaling manufacturing will still give us some cost. La uh, next slide, please. This is how the EV car looks like. So you have a battery, okay? And what do you need to do with the battery? Optimize the battery. So start with cell testing. It needs a cell chemistry testing. People are doing away with making, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the modules in between while making battery packs. They are putting up the, uh, the cells and then making the whole uh, pack out of it, okay? So innovations are applying there, but you need to test that out very rigorously. When you discharge it, what are you going to do it? Are you going to release the heat? No, give it back to the grid, right? That's where you are taking 
all the energy from, okay? And then the charging verification is another example where you have to make sure that the charging technology is sufficiently sound, okay? Now here I want to also uh, throw some light in terms of where are we heading. Today we are at 1% of the vehicle, a worldwide EV vehicle, and we are already loading the grid. What if we have 100%? We will need too much of power. Where will it come from? It will either come from fossil fuel or from renewable energy. So what are we doing? Are we trying to shift the problem of carbon generation from urban areas to power plants? That's a question to be asked, right? Are we going to do it so soon? Second thing, is the infrastructure ready to take so much of power and charge all the vehicles? Most of them will be charging at night, right? Or during the time which is not the normal office hours. That's another point. And third thing is if we have a renewable energy, solar stations, etc., they themselves need a lot of battery to store, right? If they have to pump it back to the grid at the appropriate time. So evolve, uh, very complex ecosystem is evolving in EV. It's not just about vehicles. It's about the whole infrastructure. It's about the whole generation till distribution and consumption. And that's where we are heading. This is, this is what we do at Keysight. We try to help you. Don't worry about the testers. We have enough time to cover tester later. But just worry about where are we heading. Software-defined vehicle would need immense amount of AI ML intelligence. EV would need a proper optimization for sustainability. And that's where we are. Next slide, please. This is what I would always like to show some of the, code, uh, some of the quotes which are very close to me. Look at the one. It always seems impossible until it's done. As of now, it looks impossible that we'll be able to do in a decade's time, where we will have all electrified vehicle. Will we be resorting to some other energy source like hydrogen cell fuel, uh, hydrogen fuel cell, okay, which some of the companies are propagating, which are also clean, okay? Or <coughs> we will be not doing it. We will do it. I'm very confident. The other quote which are dear to me is uh, about Mother Teresa when she was asked, uh, what is the world's greatest disease? It's not leprosy. That's not what she said. She said, world's greatest disease is to be nobody to anybody. Okay? You are all alone. And the last one, what she said is, we can do no great things, only small things with great love. It's the timelessness and the power of love that binds us all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time.